There is a Bible, a roadmap, if you will, uh, for collectors of Texas history books. It's a bibliography called Basic Texas Books and was compiled by the bookman and historian John H. Jenkins in the early 1980s. I sat down with Texas historian Stephen Harden to discuss Basic Texas Books and its creator. Here, we discuss Jenkins and how he made collecting Texana a pretty big deal, a trend that continues to this day. Oh, and if you're interested in picking up a copy of Basic Texas Books for yourself, good news, it's still in print. There's a link down in the description if you want to add a copy to your Texana library. Now, on to Dr. Harden. Well, first we need to know something about the author. Uh, John H. Jenkins was a bookman, a bookseller, uh, a bibliophile, mm. uh, a high-stakes gambler, among other things. Uh, just really one of the most interesting people Texas ever produced and one of the most erudite. And he, he sold books for a living and almost single-handedly created the Texana market. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, a kid, uh, nobody collected Texana. I never heard that word really, mm -hmm. until uh, I was a young man. But, uh, you know, I think uh, we got to credit uh, Jenkins for, for creating that market. Well, he made it high profile. He made people with money yeah. want to invest that money yeah. in the history of Texas. And, of course, I, I, I think he, he wrote this book because he genuinely loved books and loved mm. Texas, but he also wanted to increase the profile. He knew once he published this book, people would want to buy these books, and he had a lot of them for sale. So we need to give this some perspective and put a timestamp on it. And I'm going to spitball this and probably be wrong. This is my piss poor recollection. This is First edition, 1986, is it not? No, 1983. Damn it, I knew it, I knew it. 1983. So that's the time period that we're working with. It's He started his life in Texana uh, in history with, in the when he was in high school. Yes. Uh, in fact, there's a wonderful story uh, about that. He, he was a prodigy, uh, just in incredibly just perceptive young man. And he also had a rich Texas legacy. His uh, uh, grandfather was a, a great, great grandfather, actually, I believe, was a 13 year old soldier mm -hmm. who, who fought in the regular. Well, he didn't fight because they wouldn't let him. But participated he, in. He participated, but uh, later was a sheriff. And uh, anyway, wrote a, a, a marvelous memoir. Uh, that had been published partially in newspapers, but had never been. Well, as a teenager in high school, uh, Johnny edited the book right. uh, without his parents' knowledge because he wanted to present it to them as an anniversary present. Well, he, he lived in Bastrop at the time. He drove into... Uh, Austin to the University of Texas, and he sought out J. Frank Doby, mm. and uh, he said, Mr. Doby, I've done this. Would you take a look at it? Could you give me some advice? And uh, Doby, Mr. Texas, as he was mm -hmm. called, looked at this book, and he said, my God, this is better than most PhD dissertations I've read, and sent the manuscript to his friend Frank Wardlaw, who was right. then the director of University of Texas Press. Well, long story short, they published Johnny's book, and it, it as he walked across the stage to, to get his uh, high school diploma, <laughs> that was about the time the book was actually published. He, he was an undergraduate at UT and had the heady experience of having his history teacher assign his book <laughs> to the class he was in. 
So uh, yeah, that, really sharp guy. That won't inflate your ego at all. No, no. Well, you know, John had an ego. Uh huh. Yeah, John had an ego. And that the I will have to wonder. I mean, I it's natural to think that well, maybe that stems from those experiences. Well, maybe. maybe. But, but it, it, I mean, it it kind of took some pluck to be a you know sixteen year old and yeah. say you know well. We'll take these memoirs and I'll um, I'll edit them yeah. and I'll publish them. Well, you know, I'm still borrowing dad's car or whatever. I don't know. He, right. he was actually borrowing his dad's car. But that puts us at, we're at UT Austin in the 1960s. Um, and, and another uh, giant of Texas history, Mr. J.P. Bryan, is there with him and is in league with him in this early publishing effort yes to publish texana between the 60s at ut when he starts a publishing company actually starts too because you have mm -hmm. pemberton and you know the jenkins, jenkins publishing Park, yeah. which i always thought one was strictly for reprints uh, so when pemberton was started according to to jp bryan pemberton was intended to be for reprints only. I know Pemberton did some non they did some original stuff later. So he's publishing books and then he's, he's selling rare books and he gets involved with, you know, these book theft capers, which, you know, he, he then writes about and does, does these, you know, fine press pamphlets and, yeah. and things, which then he can sell and uh, which are delightful, by the and way. And they are. You know, they're, and and on top of everything else, John could write. There's there's good there's good humor in yes, those. Yes. And and there's there were genuine capers. There's intrigue and action and adventure and the the mob and and, and now I from from friends I've talked to, they they tell me that yeah, it's a great story, but John always said, don't let the truth get in the way of, of a great story. So I don't know as, as historical documents how accurate they are, but as, as great reads, uh, they are, you know, very credible. So then we get along to another significant date where Jenkins has come in contact with a military historian. I know you're yes. a military historian. And... A military historian who is desirous of gathering all of the documents relating to the Texas Revolution and publishing those as a resource for fellow military historians and and uh, Texas history scholars. And so, you know, Jenkins says, "Well, gosh, I'm a publisher, and I can I can certainly help you pilot that, and you know, I'll I'll edit it." And that becomes the 10 volume uh, Papers of the Texas Revolution, which is a joint effort between General, General J. J. Matthews, Matthews and, and, uh, and Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah. So that yeah, is. I did, you know, I've always wondered why didn't Jenkins publish that? I, I wondered the same. Do, do, you, do you have any thoughts on that or any I don't ideas? because that becomes the inaugural publication of Matthew's Presidial Press Presidial and Press, all I can yeah. think of is that you know that General Matthews had this desire perhaps to have his yeah. own military focus press and yeah I think probably so I think maybe that's because you know Jenkins' name is all over, yeah, the all over the spines. Oh, sure, sure. Of, of PTR. Well, I think a lot of people who are who are familiar with papers of the Texas Revolution uh, might not even be familiar with J. Matthews' name. Well, they're not. Um, so, in, in case y'all don't know, Texas History Trust digitized. Papers of the Texas Revolution. So you can go to texashistorytrust.org, click on read our books, and there you go. You can search and read all 10 volumes of, of this work that's still under copyright. We got the rights to it. And we did an event in Dallas at Hall of State, uh, one of the most 
grand and glorious venues in the state as a coming out party for this new uh, accessible digital resource that the the public and and scholars and anyone who cares to can read and it was import of of significant importance to me that I got to talk about General Matthews because people give that credit to Jenkins and even professional Texas historians will say, well, in 1973, John H. Jenkins published blah, blah, blah. And John H. Jenkins compiled blah, blah, blah. And I think, well, man, you're just, you're just leaving, you're slicing off an entire guy whose baby that was. Well, you know, and, 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 and I, I don't mean this in a pejorative sort of way, but Johnny Jenkins was the kind of individual who tended to suck all the air out of the room by his presence. You know, he 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 enjoyed being the guy. I, I get that impression yeah. just from. And this. he had such a reputation, mm-hmm. you know, in, in Texas history circles that, you know, you know, when he'd walk into a room and, and you know, he was he was a he was a small man in stature. Well, I was thinking that so they're not in frame uh, for the people watching, but these chairs. Yeah. When we bought these. I thought. If we could just take those up about a foot and a half, I could have a Jenkins throne. You could. You could. I mean, his feet didn't even touch the floor when he sat in that damn thing. No, no, they didn't. Because I, I saw him sit in that chair. Wow. Uh, I, uh, but, but, you know, he'd walk into the room and there would kind of be a titter. Well, he People had say, this <laughs> reputation for going to uh, auctions and just, dominating well the room and he he had a dominating personality and again that's uh, that's not uh, a put down or uh, uh, but it, it is it's an observation 